All right, I'm going to go over um, how to do the next text animator. Before I do that, I want to cover um, planning for the next assignment. Next week, we're going to start our hologram assignment. Um, <clears throat> just like all the other ones, you don't want to come into this without having some kind of plan and having something built. Um, the difference with this one is that uh, a lot of your planning can be done right inside of Illustrator versus sketching things out on paper and then converting it into artwork inside of Illustrator. Uh, for me, it's a lot easier to do this just inside Illustrator. Um, when I do these on paper, I actually do have like a grid sheet of paper. I have stencils I use so I can get everything nice and accurate and symmetrical um, as I build things. So um, our hologram assignment is going to be a hologram-like interface. The idea with these is that we're layering things, so it's not just um, uh, simple stuff. It's not like we're going to have a piece of music, a play button, and then some like fast forward and a track thing, that's kind of boring. We want to make this really look complex and really have a lot going on. So this is an example of one user interface. Um, here's an example of another interface. <clears throat> here's an example of another interface. Here's an example of an interface element. Here's another one. And there's a couple more. These are things typically that if you know a couple tools inside of Illustrator, you can just get in there and just start building these things. And it's actually pretty simple to do. There's nothing crazy complex about any of the stuff um, that I have here. Um, so here's a couple pieces of um, his stuff that he's done. As a child, I Hold on, I'm sure there's audio for this too. Let me just make sure all my buttons are clicked. Speakers, no. Somewhere over here I should have audio. There it is. And this should be turned up. And this should go to headphones. There we go. So I'll pause that. We're not going to be getting into um, 3D geometry renders of that kind of thing. This could lead to that further down into a, a 3D class or something. Um, but for what we're going to be doing is mostly the flat type interfaces, more along the line of the stuff we saw um, down here, right? Like that. Okay. Yeah. So all of these are just like flat images. Now, we will be taking these in, into what After Effects calls 2.5D, where we will have this kind of depth there. This right here is not just like one image. This is actually several compositions layered on top of each other. Uh, when we were back, let's see, not there. Let's close that out too. That. <clears throat> this type of setup here is very 2.5D. There's lots of different levels to this. Um, and that's really where the interfaces feel like there's a lot more depth to them, feel a lot more complex. Okay. So um, look up Ash Thorpe. You'll see a million different things that he's done. You can see how he has his stuff set up. You can see how he builds things. And you can see the level of complexity that he does on his pieces. And that's really what you should be aiming for is that level of complexity. Um, with keeping in mind that we are going to have like two weeks on these. So we don't have months to work on these where he works on these for sometimes months to build those interfaces. Um, so um, to get yourself started in prepping, um, you want to make a new Illustrator document, not Photoshop. It has to be Illustrator. You'll make it um, <clears throat> uh, 1280 by 720. And actually, let's double this just to be safe. Uh, let's go 2560 by 1440. Um, in After Effects, if we were to take a, a, an Illustrator element and we were to, let's say, zoom in on it, um, it could still get grainy. And then we could switch stuff on that would not make it grainy, but then we have to do that. So um, we're going to build it twice as big and then shrink it down so that we have that room. Um, so I'm just going to double the size of that. Um, and then you're just going to start building things. Now, I like to kind of build it around a central idea. So thinking about what your interface would be, like what kind of interface you would have. Uh, most of the time, the easiest one, because you guys are so used to them, is something that's like a video player or a music player or something like that. 
So if I'm going to do a video player, um, I'm just going to start creating the screen and then build all the rest of the supporting elements around the screen, okay? Because that's like the most important thing. So um, I don't go pretty um, detailed on this as far as like, you know, trying to really get a plan of how this is going to be set up. I'm literally just going through and just clicking there and there, right? So there's my video player. Like that's where the video will show up in somewhere inside here. And then I'll use my pen tool and just go through and you'll find smart guides is like awesome for this. And I'll just start outlining different pieces. It's like there's another element. And then this here. And then I'm going to need some sort of way to like, let's say I'm watching a video and I want to like speed through it, right? So I'm going to make a circle or an ellipse. There we go. And now I'm just going to use my shape builder. So I'm going to use shift M and I'm going to um, hold down alt and click this <clears throat> and drag. Come on, there we go. Drag that. And then I'm going to draw another circle and then line that up. Typically, I would have copied pasted that, but it's fine. Okay, so that's roughly in the, in the right spot. And then I can add more stuff to this. I can do things like... Uh, this is my it's my play button. I'm going to make this a little bit fancier. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in place. I'm going to shrink it down. Uh, let me take the fills off of these. There we go. And I'm going to take my stroke, and I'm going to start to play with the stroke um, to get these to look a bit uh, different. If everything is the same level, you really kind of lose it. So you want to have a, ver a variety of different thicknesses. Everything shouldn't be super chunky. Um, that looks horrible if everything is like that thick. Okay, it feels very less high tech. If we have a thick one, we have a thin one, that seems to make more sense. Um, this could even go a little bit thinner, like 0.5. I'm going to copy this again, paste it again, shrink it down again. I'm going to go into my dashed lines. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, if I want these to be circles instead of lines, <clears throat> I can change the caps. And you'll see how that makes them rounded. And then if I make the dash part here thinner, oops, four, no, uh, let's go 16 here, 20. I gotta find the right numbers for this to work. 10, there we go, four. I guess one seems to be a pretty close number. I probably go a little bit lower than that. There you go. So now I have these like dots on there, which kind of would indicate, you know, some sort of control there. And then for any kind of circle stuff, I just copy paste and then change what I want that to look like. Maybe this one will be a solid one right there. Okay. Now design everything in black and white. <clears throat> then you can come back later and you can start colorizing your stuff. Um, this one right here, uh, all this is is the exact same thing that I did on the other one. It's just done um, a lot more. Uh, let me shrink this. Um, everything that's going to be moving separately, there's a separate element, is also going to be on a separate layer. So let me hide all my layers. There we go. And let's look at how this is built from the beginning. So first thing I have here is I have a background crosses. It's good to have some sort of way to ground your interface so it feels like there's an actual like something that's being projected on or something that's holding it in place virtually. So in this case, I use crosses. You can use dots. You can use whatever, squares. <clears throat> um, I created a ruler on the bottom here. Where did it go? There it is. And then I also created a ruler on the top. Now each one of these are separate because the idea with this interface specifically is that those rulers would be able to kind of adjust. So let's say I'm, I'm flying an airplane and I want to adjust like which direction I'm facing like a compass. 
I can then in After Effects control these things moving left and right uh, to make it feel like that. I also have a levels uh, strip right here. And I also have um, some different levels values. Okay. Some of these elements will be rebuilt in After Effects based on how we're going to animate them. Some of them we can use straight inside of Illustrator or straight from Illustrator and do the animation right on them that way. In this case, I'm looking at what's moving. The background elements here, 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 and here aren't going to physically move. But all the things inside them will kind of go up and down. They'll, like levels do, they bounce up and down. So in this one, I have just its own on a layer. This one's on its own layer. This one's on its own layer. And then I have this one, which is a bit more complex, a bunch of little levels that would then be able to adjust there too. Sometimes you want to just get an idea and throw it down. And if you don't end up using it, you hide the layer. You just don't use it. Um, it's better to have too many ideas than not enough ideas. Way over on, where are those at? Right there. I have these things. <clears throat> um, these were done pretty simply. Um, I created a circle. And then I created a square. You could have done these other ways too. Like that. And I'm just going to give this a different color. Like that. And then I used that Shift M Shape Builder to create two different shapes. And then I can delete this one, and now I have this as a separate piece from that. And then I can just give these a different color. Now looking at how this one might be animated, those two things can be on the same layer because how I animate this might just be rotating it like that. That's all it might do. Okay. Or what I might do is have it actually like animating, like that little bar is like getting bigger and smaller. That might be another way that I would animate that item. Everything that you build, you should have some sort of plan as to how you're going to animate that item. I have this one on this side, same thing, it's just a different design. Uh, this here was created um, a very similar way I created the other pieces. Close enough. So I built that, and then I went into my pen tool. Oops. There we go. I gave this a different color. I changed the weight on this. Why aren't you coming up? There we go. And then I just copied it, pasted it, and then I control D'd to get a bunch of them. And then I took these, made them into um, paths, outline stroke. So now they're all outline stroke. Then I can grab all these, do the shift M, and then hold alt and subtract all that stuff. go. And then I just took my original shape, copied it, pasted it, made it a bit bigger. Or no, I didn't do that. I did. Uh, let me flip this so we can see this a little bit better. There's black. That's just the stroke. And then I went to path outline stroke. Not outline, offset. Offset path. There we go. Preview and there we go. Okay, so very similar to how I created that one is that. Uh, these are just random shapes, more random shapes, more random shapes, more random shapes. Now these are all on separate layers because when I get into After Effects um, with a design like this, I may want these things to have different values, different brightnesses. I may want them to flicker. Um, it's a lot easier if everything's on a separate layer. I can make those things flicker separately. Okay, I'll show those in a second once I have more of that built. There we go. Um, so these here are all just regular circles. The only difference is that I cut it. So there's my circle. I'll give this a thicker weight so we can see it. And then I just went through with my um, scissor tool and I would just randomly cut the path. Do it really 
close. Get really far. There we go. And then I can just delete different sections. Uh, there. Oops. There. Uh, this is two pieces. I'm going to cut this one into halves here just so I can delete that. There we go. And then I can take these individual pieces and just, let's say, make that one thicker, make this one thinner. And that's how I can value, vary the weight of those specific ones. I can also grab these and make them rounded if I want them to be rounded or whatever. Um, I can also grab the shape like this, use the same scissor tool, um, not delete them, oops, but just change their weights. Just grab the different pieces and make this one bigger like this, make this one bigger like this. And that allows me, again, to have those different values right on top of it. <clears throat> then the third way, you can modify stuff. Um, Shift-M is the previous tool. Shift-W, which is the upside-down M, allows you to click and drag on a path, and you can make it thicker or thinner. So you can do stuff like this if you wanted to create these kind of more organic-looking shapes. Okay, so that circle in the middle, all that complexity is just exactly that. That's all I did to create all of those pieces in the middle. Uh, and then here's more stuff. Those bars are the same way I did the other bars. You'll see lots of duplication, uh, copying, pasting, mirroring things. There you go, more stuff there. And it's very zen if you just, like, you just sit there and just kind of, like, focus on just this stuff. All right, so now all of this is kind of like one interface <clears throat> that I would use. And then all the stuff I have up here, this is actually stuff, let me turn it on, um, that I kind of layered on top of this with the intent of being able to have a second interface kind of come off of it. You click a button, and then this other interface would appear, and then you can kind of mix these two interfaces together. So this one, come on, let's try that again. Click, 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 click. I'm just going to group them for now so I can move them like so. There we go. Okay. So again, this is done the exact same way. It's just a matter of me playing with the different strokes uh, to create different looks to it. Um, if you take any of these strokes here, like, I guess I deleted the one like my dotted one that I had here. Yes, I know. And I make these weights like ridiculously thick and square. You can get dashed lines like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and again, it makes it look high tech, it look really fancy. Okay. So you're going to go around, populate layers like crazy. Same thing here. This one doesn't have any layers, so I actually build everything on one, and then I go through and start um, grabbing pieces that I want to animate separately, like this. I will make a new layer, <clears throat> and then I will drag that stuff to the new layer, and then I will give it a name, bot right circle. Okay, and then if I needed to break that down even further, I can grab the shapes specifically put those on their own new layer. Maybe those things in the middle are something I want to organically kind of like morph around um, slowly. Um, here's another interface. This one is set up. What's that? It does look like a feature. <laughs> uh, this one is built to be set up so that um, the original interface, let's see that. Um, playlist, playlist background. All right, so this stuff here and video, UI background, that stuff there. So this is the original interface, and there's these little tabs. And then as you pull the tabs, then this would come out, and then this would come out, and then that would come out. And then you'd have controls down here for adjusting different levels of audio. This would be where your playlist resides. This would be like a um, dial to control the, vo the um, uh, video or audio or whatever you wanted there. OK, and then there's a little play thing here that would play across. Here's, again, another element. Here's more stuff. You can see the play button or the uh, playback thing that would move across the screen. These are different buttons to control stuff. These are little dots that would kind of click in and out. 
here's some text of like, here's what's playing, here's where we found it from, and then here's just a playlist of different songs or videos, and then here's just random stuff that I threw together. At some point, maybe I would use it. Um, these uh, hexagons are very popular in UI design. How do you uh, make those? Well, how do you make the hexagons? Yeah, the I, I built one, you know, uh, you and then I duplicated it. You can use the pattern tool for stuff too. So yeah, there it is. Um, so I built one, and then I created uh, pattern options. I made a new pattern. And then using the options here, you can see how I can offset this. Um, hex by column, there we go. And so now I would have that set up. And then I would be able to just make any kind of shape. Oops. Like so. And then if I go to my patterns, did I close it? Apparently I did. Oh no, wrong spot, wrong spot. There's too many tools. There we go. Click that, and then it would fill with that pattern. Okay, and the nice thing about it is you can shrink it down and then make millions of these if you really wanted to. Yes, sir. For the, right, for that one, you can either copy and paste it a whole bunch of times, or you can use a pattern. I'm more concerned that you have the shape. I'm not necessarily concerned about how you built it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just copy paste, okay. right? So literally, like, if I'm watching a movie, um, I will have my laptop there, and I'm just building interface elements. It's very... There's not a whole lot of thought that needs to go into it. It's just like, let's click and see what happens. Um, one of the things that Ash will do when he builds his is he'll put a grid up on his. Grid, grid, grid down here. And he'll zoom into these fine details and he builds like that. And then he'll use his pen tool and just draw a shape like this. And then he copies it, and he'll paste it, and then he'll paste it, and then he'll paste it, and he'll go in and trim off those pieces. Um, I think actually I just need to go and set my stroke to be the other stroke so it doesn't go past it. Oh, that's the one that does go past it. Uh, maybe it's just too big. Just nudge it over. There we go. Uh, and then he'll draw little shapes on top of those too, and then he'll connect everything together. It's, it's insane how much detail he gets into uh, for those, but he'll literally spend for uh, a single interface, he might spend an entire month working on the artwork and building it and animating every single piece that he puts inside of it, okay? So when you're done, you should have um, one user interface hologram file ready to go, all cut up, already layered. So when we come in next week, it's just a matter of here's what we can do with this and here's how we layer it and animate it and whatever else, okay? What's that? I thought the hologram you were going to do on Saturday. That's the text is due on Saturday. Uh, I thought it was the hologram is the hologram intro is one of our text things, but the hologram itself will be due in a couple weeks. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have a question, Matt? Oh, I was about to say I was thinking about maybe doing some of this or trying to do the interface of this in the lab. Mm-hmm. Maybe do some because there's not really a lot of typing for this assignment uh, for the hologram. Right. And you want to have some kind of, I mean, you don't have to, but you, you having text on there and having something um, does help add detail to it. Um, it should look very complex. So if you can add, like, let's say a little box and you have code, like, scrolling, that makes it look complex. Or you have little things kind of like we looked at the animators last time, just having random characters in there is sometimes enough, too. Okay, but I'll just start with the text for now. Yeah. But you'll find, too, it doesn't really matter what the text is as long as it looks technological. Um, sometimes I'll go and I'll find um, uh, bits of code. I don't know if that'll pull anything up. Articles in front of you. No, that's not it. Um, examples of programs. There we go. 
and I'll find a thing that has like an actual programming coding thing like this, right? And they, it's kind of like the, uh, if you're in design class and you have the lorem ipsum stuff, yeah. finding this kind of thing, you can have that kind of scrolling on one of your pages um, pretty simply, right? And you can even pull up some of your Word documents that Windows would have and copy that random text and throw it in there. If you find something kind of hidden character, like this is a, a uh, text-based image of, or a text-based representation of my After Effects file, um, you know, that might be kind of cool. All right, so questions on that, getting that ready? No. What does it do? Do you want to have the interface stuff set up by Monday? Okay. So okay. Obviously, this thing is just kind of something that you sort of do. Yep, that's your planning stuff, so that when we get to the interface, you're just focusing on the interface. You're not focusing on building the interface and then doing that. 